Hi all, welcome to my channel, welcome to my world, it's the world of Wayne. We now got stage 15 of Eagle Moss and Hero Collectors Build the Ghostbusters Ecto-1. So we've got the next four stages delivered. That's 15, 16, 17, and 18. So we're gonna start off with stage 15. Let me show you what we have gotta do. Once again, at the start of the magazine, each stage, which does come in the box looking just like that. Lots of bits in this one. As you can see, we're gonna be working on the suspension in this one. Um, but it gives you an inventory of everything we've got, including all the screws. And as you can see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different kinds of screws. And they are all here. As you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven some of these screws are really tiny as well so i may need my pho screwdriver not just my pho screwdriver uh, but as you can see we've got all the uh, inventory for all the stages in this one but the one we're more interested in at the moment is the right front suspension and tie rod which we're working now this is pretty similar to what we did in the last issue uh, which does mean that we're going to need a G clamp here and because you all shouted at me last time I've also got this lovely bit of flowery fabric to put between the uh, G clamp and the uh, chassis of the vehicle so I don't scratch it but once we've got this together including the brake drum there uh, we're going to have both sides of the suspension and the brake drums completed so that's what we're going to be doing in this stage uh, I'm so happy to have this because if you have a look at how this looks at the moment this is where we're at. Now I'm gonna be lifting the engine off because we don't need that. And if you remember, that's what the engine looks like. I know a lot of you have been weathering your engines up and they look absolutely amazing, but that's what we've got at the moment for that. Uh, but we're gonna be working on this. And because this is just flapping around at the moment, we need to complete this side. This will then fix into place. So that's where we're gonna be by the end of this uh, stage. And I can't wait to get cracking on it. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. So just like last time, we're gonna take the lower suspension arm looking just like this, and we're gonna need the knuckle connector, which looks like this. This is the one without the hole in it. There are two very similar ones in here. Uh, the other one looking like this. We don't want that one. We want the one that's got this little detail above. And quite simply holding it this way around, so that these parts are pointing upwards, we're gonna be putting this section in between them just like that. That's where that's going to be going. But obviously we need to screw it either side and those screws that we're going to be putting in are EM screws. So I've got the EM screws here, but before I put them in, I've got a little pin here. And once again, I've got my trusty pot of oil in here. This is three and one oil. This is all metal here. So I want to make sure that I do lubricate this up before I put it in because uh, I want the threads to go in absolutely perfectly. So we'll get these open. It's a simple way to open them, just twist it in your hand. I learnt that way, way, way back when we were doing the uh, DeLorean build. So uh, we won't have a problem there. So the way I did this last time was I held it just like this. I put one side in, but I only put it in really loose, just so I could get the other side in there. So let's get this one in, screw that in. That's got in absolutely lovely. I'll just finish off the other side here. That oil certainly does make a difference, I have to say. Uh, I think everyone should be using that. Uh, and that looks just like that when that's finished. Now I'm gonna put the screws together just underneath the EM bag there, uh, because we're gonna need to put the rubber bumper just into this suspension arm here. And that looks just like that. As you can see, it's got a hole at the bottom, but we need to attach this. This is gonna be going just on top here. Gonna fit just like that. Uh, but we need to attach that with a different screw, which is a GP screw. Now the GP screws are one of these really tiny ones. So uh, I'm just gonna get one out and just see if my screwdriver does fit that. Now I'm using a PHO screwdriver on this. Oh yeah, it fits it fine actually. So I don't think I'm gonna have to need to do anything with that. So again, holding the suspension arm this way around, this is just gonna sit on top there. We're gonna be screwing that in underneath with this screw. Now this isn't metal. So I haven't dropped any glue in it. But it's gone in absolutely lovely. Just make sure it's tight. You don't have to over tighten this. If you do, it's only rubber. It's just gonna cut the thread and the screw will just keep turning, which you don't want. Uh, but that's in nice and secure. There. Now we're gonna need the upper suspension arm, which looks just like that. And once again, that little piece that you saw last time, the knuckle that's slightly different from the other one, that's gonna be going in here. Now it doesn't matter what way around we go with this, but basically this is just gonna go into there again. And once again, we're gonna be putting EM screws down each side. So I'm gonna keep that where it is, bring my oil over, load up my pin and just drop some down each side. One there, one there. 
and then we'll get two EM screws in there. Now I'll tell you what my initial impressions are of the car at the moment is I'm absolutely loving the amount of uh, the amount of metal in it. <laughs> what I'm actually doing here is I'm just starting the screws up here and then I'll put that other piece back in. I'm just seeing if that's easier. See, I learn as I go along. So that goes in like that. I can make sure that that's in straight then. I don't think that one there was in straight, so I'm gonna just take it out and put it back in. Yep, that is now. Then we'll get this bit in. Just like that. So that's one side in. Turn it round, tighten the other one up. I'm actually finding if I lie it flat like this on the dash, it uh, enables me to ensure that the screws do go in absolutely straight and there we go that's that section in there as well now we're going to be putting this shaft in and with these lugs facing down and this facing this way around with the indents facing up this is going to go in just like that there once again it's going to be secured on either side here with an em screw so i will drop some more oil in there I've just come to realize that the actual screw holes are in the bracket, not the uh, not the part here. Better to be safe than sorry. I'm putting oil everywhere. <laughs> you can never be too sure. But I do want to make sure that I put this down. So holding it again that way, this is going to be going that way around. So I'll just line it up where it's going to go. I'm going to see if the old trick of uh, keeping it flat will actually help put this in. But uh, I'm going to put that in lining it up with my cutting mat here to make sure it's straight at this time now you know you've got your screw in absolutely fine because it should be easy to screw there shouldn't be a problem getting that screw in if you are having problems getting your screw in chances are it's not straight in the uh in that thread there as you can see this is going in absolutely fine and when that's done that's going to look just like that with this section at the bottom like that. Okay, now we need to bring over the chassis that we've been working on. And this time, I'm just gonna line it up. Obviously, we're gonna be working on this side here. So if I flip it over, the first thing we're gonna do is the section that we just worked on here is actually just gonna go into these two slots, just like that. Now you wanna make sure you put this in the right way. So as you can see with the R there, it needs to be facing towards the base of the vehicle. So I'll just get this in here. Just like that, we'll screw that down. Now turning it over, we're gonna be putting the other suspension arm looking like that. And it's gonna go in this way with the indent facing down, not that way, this way here. Uh, we're gonna put that just over the brackets just here. And we're gonna lie it gently because the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna put some brackets just over the top here and here to keep that held into place. Now these are the brackets, as you can see, you've got one high side and one low side. So the higher side is gonna go onto that side there. And then the lower side will obviously drop down there. So when these are in, it's gonna look just like that. But these are held in with IM screws. So got them here. I'll keep that over that side, the IM screws, so I can uh, know where I am. Clean up a little bit of oil on that mat there. I think I've gone to town on the oil because <laughs> I've got some on my hands and it's making it a little bit tricky to put this together. We've got four IM screws to put in here and as you can see, I'm putting them in here now. I'm just taking that out again because me mentioning oil, I'm going into the metal and I'm very conscious that I want to lube these up as well. So I'll drop some oil into here. One, two, three, Oh, put that all back together again and now I can put the rest of these IM screws in it's amazing how when I first started to put that one in there I didn't have any oil in that uh, screw hole there and the difference it makes when you do add a little bit of lubricant in there the screws just go in like butter it's lovely like a knife cutting through butter then again, 
I suppose you could use butter, couldn't you? <laughs> Someone told me the other day that they used uh, cooking oil. That's an interesting one. But I suppose, as I always say, if it does the job, <laughs> then use it. <laughs> Let's go tighten all of these up. And they're all tightened up. Now it is important to really take your time over this and make sure they're in correctly and stuff because uh, you're never going to be able to get to this once we start building the car on top of it. So we can put that to one side now because we're going to be working on the brake drum which looks like that and we've got the steering knuckle looking like that. Now as you can see we've got two lug holes here on the steering knuckle. They're going to match those two holes that you can see in the drum just there. So I'm going to line this up so those holes line up and it's going to go in this way with this detail here on top and then we're going to secure that in with EM screws which are the first ones we used. Uh, once again this is this is metal and anytime I see metal I'm going to drop some oil in there and it is funny because while you've been watching this build the amount of times I've probably said oil in this episode you could have a game out of it I reckon <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just making sure these are lined up. Now these are going to go into the holes rather than the actual raised lugs here. So it's going into the normal holes. Let's get the first one in. Absolutely lovely. One more. And then that's the last of the EM screws. We have got one spare, but we won't be using any more EM screws in this stage. Nice and tight. And there we go, and that's the steering knuckle in place. Then we're gonna be putting the back plate in. Now the back plate goes in, if this section here of the steering knuckle is pointing out that way, this is gonna be going in just like that. So the detail section here is pointing straight up compared to this section coming out. And as you can see, we've got three screw holes there, and that's gonna take HP screws. So I've got them here, let's tighten them up. Now these are going into plastic, so that's why I'm not using uh, oil on it. And once again, you know that because if it if the screw ends in an M, it's going into metal. If it ends in a P, it's going into plastic. So here's the second one. And lastly, the third one here. Just going in here like this. And when that's finished, that should look like that on that side and that on that side. Now we need to bring over the chassis again here because we're going to attach the steering knuckle here to the top suspension here. So to do that, we've got the uh, connector here is actually going to go underneath this section here. So the steering knuckle is going to be sitting on top. It's exactly like we had on the other side here. So this is going to go underneath and the steering knuckle is going to sit on top. That's going to be held in place with a JM screw. So once again, I'm just gonna drop some oil just into the screw holes here. I'm not actually sure which one's got the thread. I think it is the one I put in, uh, but I'm putting some oil in everywhere and I'll open this bag of JM screws and we'll get this in place. So once again, remember that the knuckle goes on top of this part here like that. I'm actually holding it in with my thumb underneath there. Just so I've got the, uh, a little bit tricky actually. <laughs> Just like that. So let's get this in. And then we tighten that up. Like that. Now it is going to be loose at the moment because everything else is going to tie that into place. So it should be able to turn just like that. But that's that section in. Next thing we're going to do is we've got the uh, suspension spring here looking just like that. We're just going to put this up in the air and drop the spring in just like that. Then we're going to close this together making sure that the spring is in where it needs to be. Just like that. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be attaching the top to the bottom. So I'm going to need a clamp in this. Now, last time you guys told me, Wayne, you need to put a cloth on your clamp. <laughs> and you told me off for it. So uh, I'm putting the cloth on. So let me get this clamp on. So as you can see, this is now going to go in there. It's going to be a lot easier to put in. As a matter of fact, I can back that off just a touch. Just like that. Ready to put that in. Now this again is going into oil. So I'm just going to load up a bit of oil just into the end here. And then this is going to be held in with an IM screw. So 
So I'll get that loaded up. This is going in here. Get it in as tight as you can get it. Nice and tight. Then I can take this clamp off. I bet you're all happy that I've used a bit of cloth now, aren't you? <laughs> Make sure that's coming off okay. There we go. And that's that off. And there we go. That's that suspension in. As you see, it's still able to turn. Just like that. So, good to go. Now, keeping the vehicle this way round, we need to drop in the shock absorber. And as you can see, it's got a little indent just at the top there, which enables it to go into here. It can only go one way round to fit all the way in just like that. And this is going to be screwed in from the bottom here, just through this hole here using a HM screw. So I'll get that loaded up. Now any dings you have got in the chassis and all of that, you could either repaint them or weather the vehicle up. That's entirely up to you. <laughs> you should feel it go into the shock absorber, which this one has here. Nice and tight. And there we go, that's held that together. So that's the shock absorber in. And last but not least, all we need is the tie rod, looking just like that. So the first thing we do to attach it to this section, we're gonna be putting it in with a HM screw. Just gonna put a little bit of oil in here before I get that in. Just making sure I put this in the right way. There we go, and that goes in nice and tight there. We put the other side there into the steering knuckle and that's using KM screws. That's the only set of screws that we haven't used yet. We only need one of them and the KM screws has got a flange on it. So that's gonna be going in from the bottom there. Just like this. Make sure it's lined up correctly. And once again, take your time on this because once again, if this comes off, once the car's together, you're gonna have a bad time. So I'm making sure this is screwed in as far as I can get it. Just like that. So now when I push that steering arm round, they should both turn. There should be no woggle. There should be nice, as you can see. And if I turn that side, turn that side, as you can see, there's no woggle in either side there. So that steering's working absolutely perfectly. Now, last time I did this, I did have a couple of dings just on the, uh, chassis here you're never going to see this but if i was being fussy i can just touch it up with my sharpie there as you can see and that gets rid of that completely but there you go that's all there is to doing that issue that's what that side looks like that's what that's looking like and i'll show you on the side camera again quite impactful isn't it so there you go fiddly one don't talk as much as i normally do on that one because when things get a little bit uh detailed like that i'm concentrating as a matter of fact if you can see my face I've got my tongue out all the time when I'm doing it. Um, stage 16, we're going to be doing the front suspension and steering. As you can see, it's all in there. Uh, that's going to be coming later in the week, but I really do hope you like that video. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please remember to subscribe. Other than that, take care, stay safe.